Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I would like to share a little unpackaging with you guys. So this is coming from eBay and uh, I did a thing to a thing that I also got on eBay. And this is going to be the unpackaging knife. This is the Sativi Model ST139. Carried it today at work, my first day with it, and it is surprisingly wonderful. Um, it might actually be um, a keeper Sativian. Um, and I say that in a good way because it's like with a lot of my Sativians, I usually like just get rid of them. Uh, but you know, giving them away to family members. Anything else in here? This is a very exciting. There's a spider co as you can see, and this is a limited edition that, well, when uh, went out of production already, unfortunately. Yep, another Native Five, and this was actually a Blade HQ exclusive Native Five DLC coated, all blacked out, everything M4 blade material in natural jade G10. This thing, uh, well, doubled in price as uh, most native fives, or not native fives, but uh, as most uh, spider codes typically do on the aftermarket. But as I've mentioned before, I love this, uh, this model quite a lot. So it was, at least for me, it was worth it to pick this thing up. Um, now I did have the intention to basically take those natural JG10 scales off and put my tie scales on there to make what in my opinion would be the ultimate native five. Um, this would essentially be matching my uh, PM2 with had, that has like the blacked out hardware and blade and uh, the sunburst milled titanium scales. So let's see if this is something that I could actually do. Um, and there was only a couple pictures available of this and they weren't like the best pictures, but the seller did the best that he could with what he had. I did ask him about the um, various spots of discoloration on some of the hardware. And he says that that's pretty normal. As I was looking at other native fives that have this coating on the hardware yeah it's uh it does seem like it is kind of normal but the, this just looks like the the worst of the spectrum of spots and stuff um but hopefully that's something that uh maybe it will rub away or maybe maybe i could look into getting uh, a coating service done on these things um, the only little problem that I think I might actually run into is, and, and that, by the way, that's actually extremely smooth. Um, it's brand new, hasn't been used. I'm assuming the uh, seller purchased it as an investment and then you know sold it later. He definitely got his money's worth, that's for sure. Um, but I, I I could care less regardless of how much it costed me. Um, it's definitely something that I loved and I was able to use, um, what was it? Uh, like my PayPal credit card it has a pretty pretty good limit on it and uh, like zero interest, which is freaking awesome. The only little issue that I think I might actually run into that won't really be that great is the fact that while the rest all the hardware matches up, this right here, yeah, I don't know what I'm uh how I'm gonna do that. See how this is just a pin. But on this, it's actually a screw with an end over here. Oh, let's see if this is something that I can actually do really quick. If this takes too long, I'm just gonna cut the video and you guys can look at the end results on my Instagram. Just look up my first and last name, Nathan Juarez. You'll see pictures of, of everything put together and assembled. I have a little Weeha set and start with the pocket clips. Let's just get them out of the way. 
Um, I'm still in the market for a titanium pocket clip for this because I've just I don't like the standard pocket clip that comes on them. It works just fine. There's there's really nothing wrong with it. It's just aesthetic purposes, and what this whole build is is really just aesthetic. Um, I have nothing against the S thirty five VM blade that this comes stock with, but. You know, we all know the M4 is clearly superior to it. Um, I have other things in Spyderco's M4 and it is wonderful. I have had issues with rust with M4, but the, the edge that it takes and the edge retention that it has is awesome. Even Benchmade too, I have, um, I have a knife in Benchmade's M4 and it performs well, quite the same actually. Um, the knife that I was mentioning that I had rust issues with was my Blade HQ exclusive Spyderco Smock. Now, uh, if you guys know, this Spyderco Smock is a very difficult model to get a hold of. Um, it is very popular. It's, it's such a wacky looking knife, but there is so much functionality built into it. It's It's crazy how how good that knife actually is with it looking <laughs> you know funky the way it does right so um i don't carry that knife too often but uh one day i think it was a saturday that i was working i took it to work because i just i wanted to i wanted to use it so i took it over to work and i was just doing my thing I had a long day i was working hard um and just the knife being in and out of my pocket and sweat and stuff. And well, let's see, you guys can see, I definitely do use this and it gets a good bit of pocket time. I've got all that grimy lit and shit in there. There's still some leftover oil. But oh, anyways, what I was saying about the, the smock, the, uh, the side where it was touching, uh, I guess the inside of my pocket was heavily heavily tarnished and i was like no freaking way like just in one day or just a couple hours of, of carrying it that's crazy i've never i've never dealt with that before now while i've had other uh spider codes in m4 i had a, a lightweight uh, para 3 lightweight that was also an m4 i actually gifted it to um one of my brother-in-law's best friends which i consider a an amazing friend too he's just recently getting into the the knife hobby he ended up getting himself a spyderco uh yojimbo 2 and he loves that thing he let me let me try it out we went out to go visit them uh him and his wife for for their wedding out in temecula it was beautiful beautiful wedding it was awesome but anyways besides that i uh i gifted him Spyderco Lightweight in M4 because I had my uh, Teal FRN Spyderco Lightweight in S90V and I was like, eh, I really don't need both lightweights and it really isn't a model that I love, love, so I didn't really care to have multiples of it. It's a good looking knife and the functionality is there, but um, I was just like, you know what, I'm never even going to use this M4, uh, this M4 variant, so... I gifted it to him. It had maybe like two, three days of pocket time on it. It was practically brand new. I did sharpen it before I uh, gifted it to him and that thing was freaking ridiculous with that edge. Now I have a uh, Wicked Edge sharpening system. The, the, the older one that it comes with like a, comes on like a stone block as an option or marble block. Um, it's served me well, it was still rather um, expensive item it was like 600 something dollars um, and then i also did get some extra straps and crap for it but i still have that it's going really good in sharpening all my all my other knives and i don't have an issue with sharpening m4 honestly it feels just like everything else so when other youtubers talk about oh this this knife material is a pain to sharpen oh this one this one's kind of this one's kind of funky. Oh, that one that one has this characteristics when you're sharpening it. And I don't really notice too big of a difference between, you know, mid-grade to uh, you know, higher 
performance steals. Um, I also haven't experienced that many different steals. You know, a lot of the basic stuff, maybe like eight or nine different steals, and there's like a bajillion more. But uh, let's see if we can take this apart. Yeah, man. Should come out. But yeah, I just I never uh, I never notice anything special about or especially difficult about sharpening M4. It didn't seem like it was uh, more of a challenge than it uh, than really anything else. The only blade material that I've noticed that is that has any different characteristics in sharpening was probably like. Uh, Shoot, why am I gonna get this out of here? Let's see if I can pry this a little bit. That helped. Um, the only blade material that I've noticed is probably like D2. Um, D2 does feel relatively soft in comparison to everything else. Um, it takes a whole lot less uh, effort to get it to uh, a really good sharpened edge, um, you know, versus like multiple passes with the stones. I, I do maybe like half of the passes that it would take with really anything else. Um, but a D2 is still, is still good when it's uh, heat treated well as with any steel. Um, and I am in, you know, by no means a uh, steel connoisseur or expert of, of any kind. But, uh, I guess that's just my take on it. So, we got all that off. Nice, nice. So, I mean, I'm still gonna have two knives here. I'm just gonna be taking all the, the black hardware pieces to, uh, I guess the titanium scaled one. Including the backspacer, I'm really hoping everything is all the same. It, it should be. I don't. I've never done this before. I've never seen anybody do this before. Um, I know there's a bunch of crazy spider core crack crackhead people that you know love doing stuff like this. I just don't really think there is anybody out there that has recorded themselves doing it. And surprisingly, my phone hasn't shut off the video and said that. Hey, yeah, you're taking too long. What am I doing? Okay. Um, next way to this piece. Hardware over here. Pivot hardware. Screw clip hardware over here. I just want to check this out really quick. See if this is all the same. Yeah. Everything's all the same. Same holes and everything. Everything lines up. That's cool. That's cool. That's the blade. This is the... Um... Here. Mm -hmm. So let's take these washers and just clean it real quick. These things are. I can't remember if I pulled these off the the new one or if these are the old ones, but uh, these things are filthy. <laughs> They're probably on the one that I was carrying, probably, most likely. Yeah. Um, if anybody knows of a way to properly clean these or something, let me know, because these things kind of suck to have to clean. So there's that. Is that this? Yeah, that's the same. Which side is the one that has the square? Is it this one? Oh yeah, that's the side that has the square. Cool, okay, now for the blade, throw that on there, okay, okay, we're getting somewhere. Uh, this back piece with the squared off side, we're gonna have to keep that one silver, unfortunately. It just, it is what it is, you know. Then, this is somewhere or the other around here. This interacts with that. In here. Come on. Come on. 
There we go. That is there. Take this little spring out of here for a sec. Okay, everything looks cool. It's cool. I think I'm missing something. Oh. Yeah, let's not have sharp M4 blades flopping around. Okay. Let's try this again. You know, let me see if I could actually just screw in this one. Is that the squared end? Okay. This goes over here. Let's see if I can just get that piece already. No, this is a pivot screw. So we'll get that right there. This is the 210. Is that on there? Yes, it is on there. Cool. So that's on. That's there now. Close that. This is over here. Is there a way for me to screw that down? There should be. Okay. So let me get the. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Ow. Where's the Alzer? <laughs> um, here is a hardware screw, body hardware screw. Nice, nice. Close in. All right, everything else is holding up. Let's just throw this washer on top. There. Let's throw the spring back in. Make sure it goes like this. Pushing up against that. Perfect, perfect. Let's put this on top. And, oh, yeah. It's the squared one, so I gotta rotate that. Kind of using this as a like a wrench. Where's it? There we go. Why is it sticking out so much? Oh. Hmm. There we go. Oh, this also has a Jesus Christ. So stupid. It also has a body screw right here. <laughs> so just dive that in a little bit. I'll lock it down. There's the spring. Get that in there. Push this down. Is it supposed to be like that? Is it? I don't know. I feel like it is. Maybe not. Is it like that? No, it's not like that. Drops it down. It's probably like that. Yeah, we're, we'll, we'll go with that. Where is... Is that it? Please tell me that's it. Kind of hard to see. But I think that is it. I can go ahead and start screwing everything else in together. Let's get these body screws here and down here. Get that one snug. Set this one right. Pretty 
tight. I'm always scared about like threads that are like, I guess the interaction between threads and the screws that are like really snug because I'm always scared that I'm actually cross threading it and fucking it up. It's a big fear of mine. This is another T6. But all these, they have some thread locker coming from the factory. Um, actually, you know what? I think I am able to use a black one. Oh, wait, I don't have another freaking black one. <laughs> oh, never mind. Just put a freaking black Sharpie on there or something. That is not the right way. Is it? No. It's the other way around. I think that was the right way. No. Interesting, interesting. I don't know if this is actually gonna work. Am I missing something? Sorry, it's an ice cream truck going by. It's already like mid. October and we're still having like freaking 95 degree days in some other states like people are having like hmm. does that even go through there no don't tell me oh, it does so why isn't it not going through the other way goes all the way through and I just need a little bit of rub I mean it's tight but it should fit it's, it has a flat over there on that side but it doesn't on the other so that means that this should go in If I collapse it. Mm, okay, you know what? I'm going to take off the freaking... This side. Just so I can access it. Actually put it in before I close everything. I should have done it to begin with. But... I just don't think straight sometimes. that off just lift this for a second um it was this screw yeah because i don't remember being on the face of this it was to the back side does this even go through the back side yeah it does cool yeah so that's there. Let's put this back over. A snug fit. Oh shit. <laughs> Let me just lift the spring. Put the spring back down. Okay. And that is missing the washer. <laughs> I'm glad I took it apart because I'm freaking missing a washer. Hey, yeah. Uh, apologies if that was getting a little boring. You guys will have to continue watching. But if you would like to continue watching me struggle, feel free. Okay, okay. For the blade. Set that back down. Now. Where 
Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And this part needs to be rotated a little bit. Okay. See this pivot screw right there. This pivot screw over here. Okay. Body screws six point T eight. Let's get these guys in there. Black one, black one, and then the silver right up here. That was gonna bug the shit out of me, it really is. And the one fucking silver screw. I don't know if <laughs> you guys know of anybody who's willing to uh, DLC coat some hardware <laughs> for a price, of course. I understand, you know, free services or anything like that. Even if I were to like um, go through a Spyderco's warranty and be like, hey, the hardware on this unit is shit, I'm sure they wouldn't even do a thing about it. No, I mean, it looks pretty darn cool, that's for sure. Still pretty smooth. Man, that really sucks. Wish I had another freaking screw. Well, yeah, whatever. Like I said, I'll just put some freaking Sharpie on that or something. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. And I'm pretty sure I put the spring on backwards. But whatever, you guys get the point. This thing looks pretty cool for the most part. This is like, like that. So I'll just take this apart. I don't carry this knife often anyway. So I'll take it apart. Maybe later today. As I got some stuff to take care of after this video. But yeah, as I mentioned before, I will be posting the results, pictures, and stuff on my Instagram. Just look at my first and last name, Nathan Correas. And you guys can see all my knife junk that I put up there. Videos of, you know, knife reveals and little projects here and there. Just basic content. Feel free to, you know, like any of my stuff and, you know, give me a follow. That'd be cool. So I'd love to you know, interact with some of you guys on a different social media platform. It's always nice. I like the change of pace. Still fast pace, but uh, it's just a different platform really. Oh, there you guys go. So a, for the most part, reverse Tux Native 5, and in my opinion, pretty close to an ultimate Native 5 aftermarket build. You have M4 DLC from the factory, Starburst pattern, mill titanium also from the factory, and yeah, this thing is this thing is pretty good looking. Honestly, let me know what you guys think about this. I really appreciate it. I will be putting this mess over here together at a later time. And thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful day.